Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Logi of Bios. Today we are going to start a new topic of human physiology, digestion and absorption. But before that, I want to know that you have knowledge about these five basic questions of biology. So let us see how many of them you can answer. So here comes the first question. What is biology? What do you mean by biology? What is actually biology? What biology does means? This is our first question. Second one is who coined the term biology or who gave the term biology? Third one, who is the father of biology or who is regarded as the father of biology? Next is who is the father of zoology or who is regarded as the father of zoology? And finally, who is the father of botany? So these are the five questions which are very important and come into your answers. Okay, hope you have commented well. So now let's proceed towards the answers. So first answer is the term biology came from two Greek words, actually two Greek words that are bios and logos. Bios means living and logos means study of. Therefore, biology together means study of living beings. Biology is a branch of science which deals with the study of living things. But what is living? What does living mean? Living is something which possesses the following characters. What are the characters? Birth, living will take birth, growth, he will grow, development, he will show many development. In his lifetime metabolism he must show metabolism energy formation forming energy for the cells energy is ATP adenosine triphosphate they are remarked as energy currency of the cell so energy formation response to stimulus response to stimuli remember this this is important response to stimuli then reproduction producing new one producing new offspring progeny Reproduction, consciousness, he will be conscious. Adaptation, he will adapt to the environment. Repair, he will repair and healing. Repair and heal. Lifespan, he will have a fixed lifespan. Every animal, everything, every plant animal have fixed lifespan. And finally death. So these are the characteristics of living. Anything, anything which shows all these characteristics is regarded as living. And biology is a study of this living beings. Okay, clear. So let's proceed. The term biology was given by many scientists, but generally, Trivenus and Lamarck are considered as the pioneers because they both gave together in the same year. So they are considered as the pioneers. But T. Bedos and K. F. Burdach also gave their theories of naming biology. Next one, the father of biology. Father of biology is none other than Greek philosopher Aristotle. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and he studied the different aspects of the life of plants and animals. So he is regarded as the founder of biology and most people considered him as father of biology. So, father of biology is Aristotle. Next, father of zoology. Father of zoology is also Aristotle. Zoo in Greek means moving and logy means study of. Therefore, zoology stands for study of moving things. So, zoology is a branch of biology which deals with the study of moving things. And study of moving things are animals, study of animals. So, zoology is a branch of biology which deals with the study of animals. So, Aristotle is the father of zoology. Next is father of botany. Father of botany is Theophrastus. Botany came from the Greek word baskin, means grazing. And botany is study of plant, branch of biology which deals with study of plant. It's called botany. And father of botany is Theophrastus. And branch of biology which deals with study of animals is zoology. Father of zoology is Aristotle. Now Theophrastus, he wrote this book, History of Plantarum. 
and described 480 plants in it. He also studied different physiological aspects of plant, seed germination, metabolism, plant reproduction, plant growth and other morphological features. So he is regarded as father of botany and he wrote this book Historia Plantarum. Remember this because it is asked, this question is asked that Historia Plantarum is written by A. Aristotle, B. Plato, C. Theophrastus, D. Charles Darwin. So Theophrastus C is correct. So these were the five basic questions and uh, let's see how many of them you have corrected. So ne next proceed, let's proceed to our next topic that is digestion. So here comes digestion. Digestion is a catabolic process, remember catabolic process in which large complex molecules or bigger molecules, complex molecules are bigger molecules or polymers, they are polymers are broken down into small simpler molecules or smaller molecules into monomers. Poly means many and mers is unit, many units and mono is single, mono means one, and mers means unit. So monomer is single unit. These monomers join together and makes the polymer and the reaction is called polymerization. Polymerization is the reaction by which small monomers or single units join up together to form chains of large molecules or polymers. It is called polymerization. But digestion is opposite. Digestion is a catabolic process in which large complex molecules, complex molecules or polymers are broken into small simple molecules or monomers in the presence of enzyme. Remember this in the presence of enzyme. What are enzymes? Enzymes are biological catalyst. Now what is catalyst? Catalyst is a substance which stimulates the rate of reaction. Okay, catalyst is a substance that increases the rate of chemical reaction without itself undergoing any chemical change. And biological catalysts are called enzymes. So digestion is a catabolic process in which large complex molecules are broken down into small simpler molecules in the presence of enzyme. Now, purpose of digestion. Why we need to perform digestion? What is the use of digestion? Digestion is used to break large non-diffusible substances into small diffusible form. Non-diffusible, those which cannot pass the intestinal line and those which cannot go to the blood, cannot diffuse into the blood, they are non-diffusible. And digestion diffuses them, breaks them to make small diffusible, those which can be diffused in the blood. Actually, our blood can only transport small molecules. So digestion breaks the large complex molecules into small molecules so that our body can easily transport it. Our blood can take it through every part of our body and meet the requirements. So in the slide I have mentioned catabolic. See catabolic. So what is catabolism? Catabolism is a process in which large molecules are broken down into small molecules and as a result heat is evolved. So catabolism is a exothermic reaction. Exo is outside and thermo or thermos is heat, heat giving reaction. So catabolism is a heat giving reaction, exothermic reaction in which large molecules are broken down into small simpler molecules. And opposite of catabolism, opposite is anabolism. Anabolism is joining, catabolism was breaking and anabolism is joining of small units to form large units with the help of energy. So anabolism is an endothermic reaction. Endothermic means endo means inside and thermos or therma is heat, heat taking reaction but catabolism is a heat giving reaction. Lots of students get confused about catabolism and anabolism. Even I remember I also got scolding from a teacher, uh, probably in class 9 due to writing the opposite meanings. So here is a shortcut. In class 9 and 10, we had ASL exam. So remember that ASL, anabolism, small to large, ASL, anabolism, small to large, okay? And those who have used the computer programming language logo, L-O-G-O, logo is a computer programming language. There is a command CLS, 
that clears the screen cls for clears the screen and remember it it stands for catabolism large to small cls catabolism large to small and anabolism asl anabolism small to large and catabolism plus anabolism together makes up metabolism understood okay now digestive system what is digestive system the system or organ system which performs digestion is called digestive system okay digestive system is broadly categorized into two different categories first is alimentary canal or gi tract and second is digestive glands the glands which are associated so we shall study them separately and in details so let's start with alimentary canal so here comes the gi tract or gastrointestinal tract gaster or gastro is a term which is used for stomach and intestinal is for intestine so the tract of gaster means stomach and intestine is remarked as gastrointestinal tract okay the function of this tract is to intake food then to digest it then to absorb it and finally ingest it through the anus the feces are ingested through the anus remember ingestion is for food but excretion is for urine urine excretion we excrete urine but ingest feces our stool is ingested but urine is excreted okay understood the difference so gi tract broadly considered the mouth the esophagus the stomach and the intestines and finally anus these are the parts of gi tract so gi tract is average 9 meters long and it is longer during the post mortem because we will study the intestines they are highly coiled they get highly coiled uh, due to something we will study that and when we die the intestines relaxes so they are longer after death and after death you will find the dead body his height also increases because the vertebral column also relaxes the spine relaxes and so many things there are many morphological characteristics so they increases so height also increases so to become longer or taller you don't need to drink compline you just go and die okay no no para don't die because if you die then whom will i teach so don't die just listen okay next is why the digestive system is so long it is so long because it allows time and space to break down the food and absorb nutrients for breaking down these complex molecules and into small molecules with the help of enzymes we need time and we also need the space without time and space we cannot break these complex molecules it is very difficult and hard and finally we have to absorb it also so the digestive system is made so long that it can properly digest the food then absorb the nutrients and waters and finally ingest the feces okay so now let's proceed to the first part of the digestive system tract that is mouth so the mouth or buccal cavity buccal cavity is mouth is guarded by lips lips are the fleshy parts of your mouth they help us to intake food express emotions and finally talk now see here is a depression so this depression or vertical group between back of your nose and the border of the upper lip it is called philtrum it is a vestigial depression between the nose and the lips vestigial means which has no use to humans which has no use to us it is vestigial philtrum and this is cupid's bow cupid's bow is a shape resembling a double carved wooden bow see this is a carved wooden bow this is a wooden bow like structure this is cupid's bow okay and this upper lip or superior upper is superior one who is upper is superior lip and this is inferior or lower lip inferior and biological terms for lips are labia so now 
let's come to this picture here the first structure we will see is gums or gingiva biological name of gums is gingiva the gums are the firm area of flesh around the roots of the teeth in upper jaw as well as the lower jaw so gums holds the teeth gums function is to hold the teeth and infection in the gum is called gingivitis gingivitis is infections in the gum now this one is the inferior labial frenulum labial is to lips and inferior is lower lips inferior labial is lower lips and frenulum is a fold of mucous membrane so inferior labia frenulum holds the inferior lips or lower lip to the gum and this one is the superior labial frenulum this one holds the superior or upper lip to the gum now there is lingual frenulum lingual frenulum this one is a lingual frenulum it holds the tongue and frenulum is the mucous membrane fold of mucous membrane so lingual frenulum holds tongue to the base and the upper part of the mouth is called palate palate is the roof of mouth in humans and other mammals it separates the nasal cavity from the oral cavity so palate separates the nasal cavity and the oral cavity just imagine if there was no border between the nasal cavity or oral cavity then the food we chew may come out from our mouth or from our nose and from our nose we may be able to eat food so it is a horrible thing to imagine so palate acts as a barrier and it protects the inferior portion of the pharynx that is oropharynx and to the superior portion of the pharynx that is nasopharynx and the palate also helps us to speak the talavya varna are spoken with the help of palate so this was all about palate the front portion of the palate is called heart palate because it is made up of bones and the back portion is called soft palate because it is made up of muscles and this structure is called uvula uvula is a flesh fleshy extension of the back of the soft palate which hangs about the throat it prevents food from going up to the nose or nasopharynx so function of uvula is to prevent food from going up okay from this slide you have to remember the cupid's bow this philtrum this uvula and its function the heart palate bony heart palate soft palate and the most important is palatine rugae palatine rugae are also called plesia palatine they are tiny muscular ridges present in the heart palate if you touch your tongue to your palate you will see some tiny muscular ridges they are heart palate they are present in heart palate and they are known as plesia palatine or palatine rugae now here is an interesting fact snakes can open its mouth four times its body's width so remember this snakes can open their mouth four times their body's width now let's proceed further so here comes epiglottis so glottis is the part of larynx which consists of vocal cords and opening between them see this is the glottis this part is glottis and ap in biology means upon upon glottis epiglottis is upon glottis so epiglottis is a structure which is present upon glottis and it is attached with the tongue see it is the tongue and it is attached with the tongue so when the tongue is pushed backwards the epiglottis closes the trachea allowing the food or bolus to enter to the food pipe and bolus what is bolus bolus is chewed food with saliva saliva and chewed food is together called bolus okay this one is the nasal cavity and it has three bony elements called nasal concave the upper one is superior middle one is middle and lower one is inferior nasal concave are the scroll shaped bony element in the upper chambers of nasal cavity they increase surface area of the cavities providing for rapid warming and humidification of air they makes the air warmer and 
Now comes the sinuses. Sinuses are actually holes in the bone. See the holes in the bone. These are the holes. Bone. This is the bone and holes in the bones are called sinuses. And sinuses lighten the skull and produce mucous membrane that moisturizes the inside of our nose. This mucus layer protects the nose from pollutants, microorganisms, dust and dirt. Now see this one is the auditory tube or eustachian tube. It has a large function. Now see this is the ear, ear canal, this is ear dumb and finally this is our eustachian tube or auditory tube. It is connected with our mouth or nasal cavity because for vibration of this membrane equal pressure on both side of this membrane is required that means for vibrating this membrane this membrane needs a condition in which both the areas this side as well as this side is stable both have equal atmospheric pressure so you can see the eustachian tube is connected with our nasal cavity so that it can balance it can balance the inside of the membrane this side can be balanced so that this side can be balanced with this side the pressure of this side can be balanced with this side that is why eustachian tube is connected with nose and now we have to remember the function of uvula function of uvula is to stop food from going up to the nose and function of epiglottis is to stop food from going down to trachea if it goes down to trachea we will cough and we will have breathing problems so these are very important functions so now let's proceed here comes our question of the day in every episode we have a question which we want you to answer so here comes the question i float in water but I am not a boat. I am officially considered as a herb. But biologically, I am a berry. You share 50% DNA with me and I am remarked as the fruit of wise men. Tell me, who am I? So, let me read it once more. I float in water. But I am not a boat. I am officially considered as a herb. But biologically, I am a berry. You share 50% DNA with me and I am remarked as the fruit of wise men. Tell me who am I? So comment your answers below and we will show you the answer, correct answer in our next video. So let's go back to our digestive system. Now lingual frenulum. Lingual frenulum is a fold of mucous membrane. You can see this is a fold of mucous membrane which joins the tongue to the base now you go to the google and search about the lingual frenulum of frog you will get to know some amazing facts about it now if the lingual frenulum of anyone or any baby or any anyone is abnormally short rigid and tight or height hard to move then a condition is called ankyloglossia occurs to him and the person is said to be tongue tied that is he cannot move his tongue freely he cannot talk freely and in this case the surgeon usually make a cut here to release the frenulum and this is called frenotomy so remember this ankyloglossia and please search about frogs tongue of frogs now comes about tooth dentition is something which is very important dentition pertains to the development of teeth and their arrangement in mouth so remember this dentition is the study of teeth development of teeth and their arrangement in mouth this is dentition and study of teeth is called odontology see this is homodont this is a gharial and a dolphin they are homodont homo means similar and don't is tooth so they have similar type of tooth see these tooth are similar but we humans we are heterodont hetero means different and don't means tooth we have different tooths canines premolars molars everything we have different types of tooth 
humans are diphyodont meaning of diphyodont is having two sets of teeth that is one is permanent teeth and one is milk teeth see we have milk teeth and permanent teeth two sets of teeth humans are thicodont meaning of thicodont is our bone embedded into a socket joint to a socket so remember humans are heterodont heterodont means having different type of teeth canine premolars molars everything different type of teeth we are diphyodont means we have two sets of teeth deciduous and permanent milk teeth or permanent teeth and thicodont we are thicodont means our tooth is embedded into socket this all will do now here comes the tooth this upper part is called crown crown of the tooth and this is the root and here sometimes it is called neck this notch notch is depression this depression is sometimes called neck of the tooth now this is enamel enamel is the hardest substance in the body it is made up of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate so you should eat lots of calcium to make your bones stronger as well as make your teeth stronger because enamel is composed of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate now remember one thing in enamel is secreted by a layer known as ameloblast ameloblast secretes this enamel and dentin just below enamel it is present the dentin and dentin is secreted by odontoblast enamel ameloblast dentin odontoblast blast is embryonic cell blast means embryonic cell so enamel is secreted by ameloblast and dentin is secreted by odontoblast now enamel is made up of calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate remember it now this is the pulp pulp is the cavity where the nerves nerve ending and the blood vessels are present and this one is the gingiva or gum and this is blood vessels you can see nerve and periodontal ligament periodontal ligament is a group of specialized connective tissue fibers that essentially attach tooth with the alveolar bone within which it sits so periodontal ligament actually attaches this tooth with the bone okay now dental formula dental formula is a formula expressing the number and kinds of teeth possessed by a mammal so dental formula is a formula which express the number and kinds of teeth a mammal has it is shown into fractions see if you cut your mouth from here to here across this line and see this part dental formula is taken for this part only this by this why it is taken as 1 by 4th fraction fourth fraction because see many animals do not have same dentition over lower jaw and upper jaw for example the herbivores example cow if you see if cow they have the front incisors but on the upper part they have horny plate they do not have incisors upper incisors there is no upper incisors in cows so they have horny plates but lower part they have so we take this part for our dental formula so dental formula for milk teeth of humans is 212 by 212 212 in upper and 212 in lower and into 2 multiplied by 2 because both side you have both sides so 212 multiplied by 212 Equal to twenty, so milk teeth are twenty, and permanent teeth are two one two three, two one two three, two one two three, whole two. See, two incisors, one to two incisors, one canine, one. Next two premolars, two, and finally three molars. Okay, two one two three. The last molar or third molar is referred to as wisdom teeth. Sometimes it is considered as vestigial. but it actually allows grinding it helps in grinding but it is considered as vestigial now milk teeth there you must remember students you must remember that there is no premolar in milk teeth there is molar in milk teeth there is icm that is imcm remember it imcm that is icm that is incisors canines and molars icm no premolars instead of premolar there is molars are present premolars are absent in milk teeth remember it icm but in permanent teeth we have icpm 
Modi. I see PM Modi. Now here comes the function of the tooth. Incisors help in cutting or shearing food. Cutting and biting food. Incisors are blade like, sharp blade like. So they help in cutting or biting food. Next comes the canines. Canines helps to grip and tear food. They are hard, very developed in carnivores. They are very developed in carnivores because they have to tear flesh apart. Next is premolar. Premolars help to tear and crush food, crushing food. Premolars help to crush food. And finally, molars help to chew, crush and grind food. So these are some functions you have to remember. So why do we need to chew food? Is there any need? Yes, of course there is a need. See, chewing food actually helps to increase the surface area of the food. As a result, the enzymes and the juices can easily act upon it and can effectively digest them. So, to effectively digest the food, we must chew the food properly. So, it is advised that those who have problem regarding digestion, they must chew food proper, properly. So, this was all about tooth. Now, let's proceed. Some dental problems. See, the first one is tooth decay. Decaying in the tooth. It is a permanent damage to the tooth. Tooth decay occurs when food containing carbohydrates such as breads, cereals, milk, soda, fruits, uh, cakes, candies are left on the teeth. Bacteria that live in the mouth digest this food turning them into acids and when the acidic level pH decreases to 5.5 or below then our tooth, the enamel is also damaged. Enamel is the hardest substance. It is composed of calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate. But due to acid, it also melts. It also melts and forms holes. And when these fissures or cavities touch this pulp, then we have to do root canal therapy in which these root canals are cleaned and then surgically the tooth upper covering is removed and finally the tooth is reshaped. So now next, now comment me, what is this called? Gap between two teeth. What is this state cut called? Okay, hope you have commented. So this is actually called diastema. Diastema is a space separating teeth. Two teeth. Space separating two teeth. This is largely observed in herbivores. Like cows, you will see there is a gap in the cows. So a diastema is a space. So just remember from this slide that tooth decay occurs due to bacteria. They produce acid, pH 5.5 and diastema gap between two teeth. Okay. Now comes the tongue. And biological name for tongue is frenulum. Lingua. Lingua. You have read lingual frenulum. Lingua is the biological term for tongue. Now see, the tongue is a highly muscular organ. It is also glandular and it has smooth muscle. Because you can control tongue, it has smooth muscles. Tongue helps us to taste, helps us to speak, helps us to swallow our food and helps us to sense the temperature of the food. So tongue is a very effective organ. So here is the circus terminalis or terminal circus. This is a V-shaped groove at the back of the tongue. It divides the tongue into the ratio of 2 is to 1. See this is a 2 and this is 1. 2 is to 1. So, circus terminalis is a V-shaped group which divides the tongue into the ratio 2 is to 1. 2 in the front and 1 in back. This is lingual tonsil. Tonsils are masses of lymphoid tissues. And this is lingua. Lingua is to tongue. Tongue tonsils, so lingual tonsils. This is palatine tonsil related to palate. So, palatine tonsils. Now, this one is the epiglottis. And finally, here comes the surface of the tongue. The surface of the tongue has many tiny projections called papillae. Papillae are tiny mucous membrane projections. They are papillae. So there are mainly four types of papillae present on the surface of the tongue. So first one is fungiform papillae. See, it is fungiform. 
it looks like fungus this shape see fungus so there are 200 to 400 mushroom shaped fungiform papillae all over the tongue see here is fungiform papillae all over the tongue it is spread it. next one is valet papillae valet or circumvalet this one is the valet or circumvalet papillae valet or circumvalet papillae these are 8 to 12 in numbers they are the largest among the papillae and each papillae has 100 test buds see this is a valet papillae a zoom section close section and here from here you can see there is this one is the test bud cell test bud cells are also called gustatory receptor cells the sensation of taste is called gustration like the sensation of smell is called oil fraction so sensation of taste is called gustration and the cells which performs this taste is called gustatory receptor cell see this is the gustatory receptor cell they are modified columnar epithelial cells they are modified columnar epithelial cells so remember it consists 100 test buds there are 8 to 12 in number they are largest and they consist 100 test buds valid or circumvalid papillae next is filiform filiform papillae this is the filiform papillae see filiform papillae they are the smallest and do not have test bud do not have test receptor cell they have touch receptor cell they helps in touch they increase the surface area of the tongue touch receptor cells they do not have taste receptor remember it filiform and foliate foliate means leaf like see this one at the side foliate these are foliate papillae foliate foliate is leaf like foliate papillae there are four to five in numbers see not much four to five in numbers and are leaf like they are leaf like structure and degenerate in childhood they generally degenerate in childhood so remember circus terminalis is a v-shaped group at the back of the tongue which divides the tongue into ratio 2 is to 1 2 in the front and 1 is to back lingual tonsils are the tonsils present in the tongue the tongue has many tiny projections called papillae papillae are tiny projection mucous membrane projections the four type of papillae are fungiform papillae there are 200 to 400 mushrooms have fungiform fungus is mushroom fungus fungiform papillae is mushroom shape next valid papillae 4 to 8 to 12 valid papillae they are the largest among the papillae and they have test bud each papillae has 100 test buds almost next filiform papillae they are the smallest they do not have test bud they have only touch receptors they can only touch receptor or touch and they increase the surface area of tongue next foliate papillae foliate papillae is 4 to 5 in numbers are leaf like and degenerate in childhood and remember one thing we can taste the food only in its liquid state if we eat any solid thing we cannot taste it until or unless our saliva mixes with it and the juices here comes to the taste receptor cells so we can only taste in the form of liquid so let's proceed now test areas there are five tests basically sweet salt sour bitter remember this sweet salt sour bitter and finally umami sweet is the apex of the tongue see sweet is in the apex apex mean front portion apex of the tongue sweet then salt is the crescent moon remember sweet salt sour bitter sweet is in the apex portion salt is the crescent moon then sour sour are these are see lenses these are convex lenses see lenses in the shape of lenses the so sour is in the shape of lenses and bitter is a v-shaped group at the back so sweet salt sour bitter and finally umami in the central of the tongue umami is the fifth taste it is a japani word see umami is a fifth taste and it is the japani word it is recently discovered and it means extremely delicious actually the food items which contains this glutamate or glutamic acid they are regarded as umami so umami is a very good taste and those who eat non-veg they actually get the umami taste because the taste of fishes and meat they are called umami extremely delicious so you must remember sweet salt sour bitter and umami sweet is apex of the tongue sweet apex sweet apex salty crescent moon salty crescent moon sour lenses sour is lenses bitter v-shaped group v-shaped 
and umami in the center of the tongue. So remember umami is the fifth taste which means extremely delicious and glutamic acid. Glutamic acid causes umami taste. So now let us see the difference between taste and flavor. So see here is a chart. You can pause the video and read the chart but let me explain in short. Taste is, there are five tastes. Sweet, salt, sour, bitter and umami. These are tastes. And flavor is taste plus aroma of the food plus texture of the food and past experiences. So flavor is a longer vision, is a far more bigger vision than taste. Flavor includes taste plus aroma, texture, past experiences. Okay. Now see this is the taste receptor cell or gustatory receptor cell. Sensation of taste is called gastration, gastration and taste receptor cell. They are modified columnar epithelial cells. Now the sensation of chili, chili, we eat chili, they are actually, there is no taste of chili. They actually stimulate the pain receptor. See this one is the pain receptors. These are the pain receptors and this is a axon terminal and they are stimulating after eating chili, they are stimulating a forward message. So we are feeling hot. So chili actually stimulates pain receptor. It does not have any taste. The five basic tests are only sweet, salt, sour, bitter and umami. These are the five basic tests and rest tests come from the mixture of these tests. And chili has no taste. It only stimulates pain receptors. So we feel hot. Okay. Now the tonsillar ring. Tonsils. Tonsils are masses of lymphoid tissues in the throat. The main function of tonsils is to trap germ and it produces a protein called antibody. Antibody. Antibodies kill the germs. Antibodies kill the germs. Function of tonsil is to purify the air which is going to our nose. Okay. And then from nose which is going to our lungs. So function of tonsil is to purify the nose air which is going from our nose and nose to our lungs. So this pharyngeal lymphoid tonsil rings, this is tonsillar ring is a ring shaped. See this is a ring shaped arrangement of tonsils along our pharynx, oropharynx and nasopharynx. This one is the oropharynx oral part and this one is the nasopharynx. See this is the lingual tonsils or tonsil of lingua means tonsil of tongue. Yes. And palatine tonsil, palatine tonsil is tonsils of palate. Tubal tonsils is upper in the nasal cavity, tubal tonsil and pharyngeal tonsil is above the pharynx on the upper portion of pharynx. This actually traps germ. So these are the parts of ton tonsils, pharyngeal tonsils, tubal tonsil, palatine tonsil, lingual tonsil. Remember this while they are ring of tonsillar ring. Okay, this is while they are tonsillar ring. Okay, so we have came to the end of our video. So hope you have enjoyed and please like, share and subscribe and help me on my journey. And please follow our accounts and solve our exam papers. Thank you.